Friends, we have a new option for poi handles. That is the topic of today's review. Drex from DrexFactor.com coming at you with my review for Gemini handles from Light Vibes and UF Orbits. Make sure to join my notification squad by clicking on both the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That way you know exactly when I'm dropping a new video. Before we dive in, I just want to give a shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, LMF Props, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can visit them all by hitting up the links down in the description of this video. I'm going to drill down the Gemini's features, ease of use, durability, and price, as well as give you some of my personal thoughts on them. So first up, a little bit of background. Gemini's are a brand new handle design that's come out of a small company called Light Vibes. They use a pre-existing LED chip called an Atom to fit inside of a new form factor that's meant to be put on the ends of tethers. These have been designed with orbiters in mind, but they can be used to apply a poi as well. A tether comes in one end of the handle and there's a small recess on the other side that's used to fit the chip inside of. From there, you put a small silicone shell over the end of it and you're ready to roll. The entire handle is controlled by pushing in on either side of the handle from the soft side. This triggers the chip inside and allows you to change modes. So first up, let's talk a little bit about ease of use. Now, this is a huge pain point for me with most of the handle solutions out there, with a couple limited exceptions. This is because a lot of them come out of the gloving and orbiting world, where intellectual property is based around how a chip is programmed. By and large, this means that when you switch between different companies' products, you're going to have to get familiar with the new programming and mode change interface. It's not the end of the world, but it's also kind of annoying. When it comes to these atoms, I found that I was able to find a mode pretty easily off the bat that I wanted to play with, but that it took quite a bit of digging for me to learn how to do exactly what I wanted to with them. Suffice it to say that if you want anything that's not included within those default modes, you will have to refer to the documentation and you will have to learn how to use this system. Beyond that, they're a breeze to set up. They interface with hardware very easily and very intuitively. So purely on the setup side of things, these are great. I've also got to say, I love the fact that I can fit two of these in the palm of my hand at the same time. This is my preferred way of doing two poi one hand and I love the fact that they're within basically the same size range as PX3 handles and palm grips so that I don't have to adjust my spinning style in order to accommodate the handles. Now, what about features? Well, to start off with, these are both awesome and terrible as poi handles, and I'll tell you why. So right off the bat, one of the biggest problems with these is that the hole that's meant to fit the tether through isn't big enough for most of the standard sizes of poi tethers. No sizes of rope will fit through, but things like pole cord or flow cord definitely will. It should also be said that there's not a lot of room inside of the handles themselves. Once you knot off the tether, there's barely enough room to fit even the chips in. I frequently worry that the chips are going to break because of the way that they're jammed in there with the tether, but so far so good. This also means that it's kind of tricky to add weight to them. The inventor of these handles actually showed me a solution that involves melting the end of the tether as you put it through washers. Now this is great in theory, but the one problem that you encounter with this then is that it's going to be really hard to trade out the tethers if you want to. In the meantime, it means that it's functionally impossible to connect these to either fire poi or contact poi, which is kind of a bummer because I would really love to see what they could do attached to fire poi. Other than that, the programming interface on these is really sophisticated. You have access to tons of colors as well as different modes. Plus which I have to say, I really admire how bright these are. So the durability is kind of an open question. I have a suspicion that over time, there's going to be parts of these that kind of have some difficulties there, but I haven't had them long enough to see it. The way that the chips on the boards fit inside of that recess in the handle makes me really nervous that at some point the LED is going to get broken off. I've had these in my possession now for several months and I've been unable to give them any kind of shocks that are hard enough to do this, but it is a worry that I have for the future. In addition, the silicone layer that goes over top of the handles is wonderfully soft and grippy, but I also wonder if it might eventually tear as you're taking it on or off of the handle. Bear in mind, these are all hypothetical cases. I've been using the handles almost daily for a few months now and I have been unable to do anything to damage them. So next up, the topic of battery life, which again, it's kind of complicated. Like many handles that are powered off of watch batteries, these kind of have a few different types of battery life to them. So my usual test with any LED prop is I want to turn it on to white mode and then as bright as it will possibly go and see how long it takes it to burn out. Now with these, as with a lot of other LED props that I've tested out, they actually go through three different states on the way to burning out completely. See, there's a point at which they're no longer producing full white light because the amount of energy necessary to turn on all of the LEDs is just not there. So they start to shift into what I call red mode. And then there is this gradual dimming where red mode becomes no longer really usable until finally they go out entirely. 
So how exactly did the Gemini stack up on that test? Well, the Atom chips inside of them basically can stay on full white bright for about five to six hours before they start to noticeably dim. At that point, you've got another two hours. So we're getting into the like eight to nine hour mark before they noticeably turn into the red zone. On the red zone, you get about another four hours before they're out completely, or at least to a point where they're no longer usable, right? So really in the grand scheme of things, I'm gonna say that you get about five to six hours on my usual battery test out of these with still several hours of usable life after if you don't mind switching the color. So overall impressions, I like these. I like how bright they are, how grippy they are, how soft they are. Um, the one thing I don't like about them is really the weight. I wish that they could be made to be heavier uh, a lot easier. Um, they, I, I definitely notice that when I'm playing around with gunslingers that they tend to fishtail a little bit, but it's something you can really, really easily adapt to with these. If I could have my wish as to how to improve them, number one, uh, I would ask that the weight would be more adjustable. Perhaps uh, creating a little side chamber uh, over on one end of the little silicone shell right here where you could insert some washers, for example. Um, I would also love to have the hole that the tether goes through much, much bigger so that you can use most standard sizes of rope as well as connect fire ploy onto a set of these. Because um, as you can see right here, that is just not going to happen with them the way the hole is right now. I imagine you could probably drill a hole that's bigger in these, but I would be worried both about cracking the plastic as well as, you know, just kind of the long-term durability of them if you did that. Plus which, uh, you would have a really difficult time tying a knot in any standard rope size inside of the casings here. But yeah, overall, I think this is a good 1.0 version of this product. Uh, I've been using them for months and really enjoy them. I've passed them off to several friends who have also enjoyed playing with them. I think this is a really, really good first generation of this product, and I really can't wait to see what they do to improve it in the future. Gemini handles are available over at uforbits.com for $50 a pair. The chips inside of them go for anywhere between $5 to $15, so total for the whole package, you're looking at about $60 to $80 for a pair of these. Do you own a set of these Gemini handles? Have you put them on your ploy? I would love to hear what your experiences are. Please leave them down in the comment section and uh, hopefully we can help each other out there. Before I set you guys loose, I just want to put out a massive thank you to all of my awesome patrons over on Patreon. These guys are the reason that I'm able to keep making these videos, so pretty please, if you like the videos that I make and would like to support them, head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorploy and sign up to be a supporter, and I really appreciate it. Thanks in advance.